Hi guys, and welcome to my new flatting tutorial. I did one of these a few years ago on another channel, and it did pretty well, and a lot of people um, benefited from it, got some help from it, so I decided to redo it and do a, a different page. Because I've learned a lot more since then, and I think I'm a little bit better at explaining things. Um, so this tutorial is going to be split into uh, two or three parts. I'm not sure how long it's going to end up being. I'm going to go ahead and flat this entire page right here. And then uh, I'll put it all up and see how long it is. So we're ready to start. I've actually outlined this process in another video on this channel. So if I go through it too fast here, you can go back to that video and get a little bit better understanding. But it's really pretty simple. We need to it, the page is in grayscale mode. We need to get it up to RGB. So you go to image mode and RGB color. So you can see now we have red, green, and blue channels. So it's now in RGB mode. So now we need to select the line art, select all, edit, copy, and make a new channel and paste it into that channel. And you rename the channel line art. And then we need to go back to our layer with it still selected, the entire page still selected, hit delete. And that will delete the line art, um, ch the layer, and it will just leave the channel. Uh, my background color was set to black, so that's why the screen went black, but I'm going to go ahead and change it to this gray color that I used on the, a previous page of this book, well, the last issue of this book. And I'll, I try to use the same colors throughout stay consistent. <laughs> so now my our line art is up here in a channel and it's turned off. If you turn it back on you see it's it's here now. And I put my line art in a channel because it's pretty much pretty much invincible. <laughs> invisible. I nearly said invincible because that's what I'm working on. Oh man. It's pretty much invisible and it won't uh, mess you up when you're picking colors. I use the color picker when I pick my colors and if you had your line art in a layer above your flat instead of in a channel you could select the black and it would it would just mess you up <laughs> um, right now it's seeing the gray behind the black it's just like it's not there so that's why I use a channel as it also is supposedly better for the processor your processing power it doesn't take as much power so that's where we are. It's ready to go. I'm ready to start flatting. And again, if that, I went too fast through that part, I have another video on how to set up your page for flatting. So go over there and there's actually a link to um, an action that will do that for you that I've already set up. So I wanted to go ahead and get right into the process. So here we go. Actually, I'll go ahead and tell you what tools you're going to need first. I thought about breaking this off into its own video, but it really doesn't take that long to explain. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Um, you're going to use the polygonal lasso tool and the regular lasso tool. Those are the only two selection tools that I personally use. And I keep my polygonal lasso selected, but I can will occasionally use my lasso tool. And I'll go ahead and show you how you do that. I usually outline this later, but I'll go ahead and show you right now. I'm going to zoom in a little so you can see. Um, I have my polygonal lasso set as my main lasso tool, and if you hold down the control key, it will switch to the regular lasso tool. So first, I guess I should explain the difference. <laughs> the polygonal lasso, as you can see, makes lines, straight lines, point to point is basically what you're doing. So you can make any shape you want, but it goes, it makes straight lines. And the regular lasso tool will make curves, curvy lines. It's basically freehand. You've got to keep your pin down at all times and you can draw whatever you want. And I usually use that one for like clouds and swirly things. And I use the regular lasso for most everything else. You can make circles with the, the the polygonal lasso, excuse me. You can make circles with the polygonal, see? You just have to make a lot more little clicks. So, I use the polygonal on everything. And the switch to the regular lasso by holding control. 
and to go around the clouds and stuff. <clears throat> I hope I'm not going too fast. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'll slow down a little bit. Um, so that's your first tool that you're going to use. The polygonal lasso tool and the regular lasso tool. And it is a, the most important thing about flatting is some of your tools have um, some options that really need to be checked and not checked in this case. Um, if you see right here, uh, each tool has its own little set of options and your lasso tools need to have the feathering set to zero and the anti-alias box not checked. And your paint bucket has the same anti-alias box and you need to make sure it is unchecked as well. And also on your paint, not paint book, excuse me, your um, magic wand, <laughs> sorry, you also need to have anti-alias unchecked. In those three places, you must, must, must have anti-alias unchecked, otherwise you're going to end up with flats that are unusable, basically. I will show you what I'm talking about right here. When you make a selection, you want the lines to be solid and crisp. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. Here is a regular last, uh, excuse me, a regular selection. And when you zoom in far, you can see that the line is really jagged looking, and that is actually what you want. When you zoom out, it's fine, you can't tell. But <clears throat> that is exactly what you want because when you take your magic wand and select that area, it's going to select the entire area. It's going to go to the end of the selection and it's going <clears> to. <throat> you know what I mean. <laughs> There's no extra space. But if you had your anti alias box checked right here, I'll go ahead and show you the difference. I'll get a light blue. Now, if we zoom in on it, you can see that the line looks a lot smoother but it really has created different colors of blue and gray on the edge so that it's when you use your magic wand it is not going to select the entire area. I'm going to go ahead and delete what it did select so you can see that it's left a blue halo around the entire selection. So if you flat a page like that you're going to end up with those halos everywhere and that's not a good thing and I'm telling you now if a colorist has hired you and you flat a page like that uh, if you don't remedy the situation, they are not going to keep using you, and I would not blame them. It's a pain to have to go in there and fix those halos. It's difficult. It's better. It's sometimes easier just to reflat the entire page. So those are the things you must do. Most important thing is to keep those things unchecked. Anti-alias unchecked. <laughs> okay, so I'll run through the tools one more time. The ones you're going to use. Go ahead and delete delete all that. Okay. You're going to use your lasso tools, your polygonal lasso and your regular lasso. I keep, and keep the lasso that you like the best selected and then hold down control when you're using that lasso to switch to the other version. So some people like the regular lasso best, just experiment and see which one you like better. I personally am a polygonal fan. And then your magic wand, anti-alias unchecked. Also, if I didn't mention it, your feathering needs to be set to zero on the lasso tools. I think I mentioned it, but just in case. Uh, also, we'll, you will sometimes use the pencil tool to make little selections. I usually use it on eyes and maybe teeth and things like that, just little things. But never use the brush because you'll end up with those feathered, edge, feathered edges that I just showed you and your paint bucket, you're going to use your paint bucket. The lasso and the paint, paint bucket are the two most important things. And then you're going to use your eyedropper tool and I never select the eyedropper tool on the bar itself. I select the paint bucket and then hold down the, the control, is it control or alt? I might have been telling y'all wrong the entire time. <laughs> if I said control before, it's alt It's to switch between the lasso tools. I always get them mixed up because I'm never looking at the keyboard. But it's alt. And it's also alt to get your color picker when you're on the uh, bucket. So, 
uh, I think that's it. And then you're going to use your zoom, zoom in and out. So uh, selection tools, pencil tool, uh, bucket tool, and your eyedropper, and your zoom. And that is it. There, there was one other thing I was going to say, and I, it totally flew out of my mind. <laughs> uh, I hope it comes back to me. But for now, we'll go ahead and jump right into uh, the actual process, probably what you were waiting on. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here and start over just in case. Uh, the software I'm using is a little bit buggy and it sometimes will delete what I've... It'll freeze <laughs> and not record what I wanted to, so I don't want don't to have to explain the tools all again. So I'll be right back with the process. 